Now call to order the public hearing on November 27th, 2023. The time is 6.46 p.m. Uh, Benjamin, please call the roll. Member Orr? Here. Member Volt? Here. Member Shroyle? Here. Member Waring? Here. Member McLeaster? Here. Member Wyrick? Here. Member Matheny? Here. Seven present. Okay, our topic this evening is Ordinance 69-2023. Uh, ben, would you please read the title for the record? An ordinance amending the zoning map of the City of North Canton to reclassify 10 parcels in the City of North Canton in accordance with the amendment procedure set forth in Chapter 1182 of the Planning and Zoning Code from their existing classifications to park an institutional or residential single-family large lot. Daryl, if you would like to uh, give the summary. Uh, as you'll note, this is for the Caplia Park rezoning and the proposed athletic field behind the proposed mire. Uh, there is a small proposed R70 residential uh, also proposed. Uh, those areas uh, for park and institutional are identified in the green. The one residential, as you'll see, is on the far west of Arnsby and those would match the surrounding single-family homes. Anybody have any questions? Council? This is a public hearing. This is a public hearing. So is there anyone else who wishes to speak in this matter? Please step forward to the microphone and state your name and address. My name is Susan Bailey, and I live at uh, 1660 Arnsby. And my question is, um, exactly, I mean, what kind of a park are we looking at? Are we looking at just a park where kids come and do things? Are we looking at dog park or, or what? Ms. Rich. Oh, yeah, I think uh, initially what we had proposed, you may not have seen some of the stuff that was circulated out, but this was designed or was thought to be more of a, a meditative park with the trail, uh, bird watching, just, you know, kind of self-reflecting. It was not the intent of, of uh, you know, turning it into any type of, of uh, structures. The, the city was trying to keep in mind what it could afford to do development-wise, so the minimal uh, you know, the, would be the southwest corner of the parcel uh, is largely meadows right now, tall mm -hmm. grass, and you know, that could be uh, bird sanctuaries. There's a lot of trees that are native there that we would want to preserve mm -hmm. and, and wind a uh, walking trail through it. So that was the intent. But um, that is your question, but I. Well, I think the, the second part of that, uh, meadows, is that the, the P and I property to the south of you, uh, that would the intent is to use that for a community athletic field. Okay, that's down by the Myers. Right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be behind Meyer. Mm -hmm. So, as Patrick said, quieter potentially a quieter use to the north, more active to the south, and that fills a community need uh, because some playing fields were lost with the construction of the. Uh, Claremont site for the schools. So mm -hmm. they're searching for a home. Okay. And then will this, I mean, will it have like a fence or anything around it? I mean, just separating it from our backyards or will it just, I mean, will people be wanting to come through the yards to go into it, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, you know, I think we were looking initially at a, at, you know, a, a natural buffer area that we would try to provide the privacy to the uh, to the to the neighborhoods there but certainly that is something that uh, we would contemplate although I think uh, after you speak I'm going to speak uh, against moving forward with this but okay. I wanted to answer your question yeah that's all I really need thank you sure, thank you. you questions anyone else comments 
Mr. DiRio. Yes, I would like to uh, speak now out and against of moving forward with this, recommending to council that, that we not take this up until we know the results of the March primary. So we know that we have a ballot issue. Uh, it's to be determined what is going to the ballot and then what the voters ultimately decide. And uh, <coughs> ultimately, if it's decided that um, you know, the community wants to stay uh, where it's at, then there are things that we cannot move forward with that are non-essential. So uh, we would uh, uh, pivot on this and then just you know, uh, go a different direction with, with the property. So certainly the property behind the uh, mire is, you know, on that corner is at least developable. Uh, but, you know, the rest of it is probably just going to stay as is. What is it currently zoned? For general business. General business? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is the consensus? Because, I mean, could those mines be remediated? We could sell it for commercial development? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's an ongoing debate on that subject, you know, as far as the mining. I mean, I used to live there mm -hmm. on Orangeby for 25 years, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, certainly, you know, any type of development there has that potential, but as you see, the part that goes up to Orion mm -hmm. on your screen right. yeah. uh, is certainly it's wedged between you know a, a house that moved and drug mart, and certainly part of that could be sold. Okay. You know, for some type of other commercial activity <coughs> if needed. Okay. But that's what it's zoned as now. Okay. I agree with your assessment, so I think it's prudent to pull out. But don't we have? Three hundred thousand dollars from the state that we took from the pool renovation. That was for the athletic field. Right. So what's going to happen? We're just going to not use that. I think we're going to wait and see what the outcome of the election is because to develop that's going to be more than three hundred. So we just lose that money. We, use, we can't no, have another we have a certain period of time to use it. You know, so we'll have it'll be extended for another two years to use it. But but we took it from the pool. We can okay. So I've already I've already you know made that. Uh, um, Moved with Senator Olslager, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Representative Olslager, and uh, he's working that through the system to have that reappropriated, and so the clock will start over. Can that go back to the pool if we move, don't move forward with the community athletic fields? Because before, when I asked if we could if get this an extension, if this levy doesn't pass, we're not moving forward with the pool. I understand okay. that, but before I asked if we could get an extension on the funds for the pool renovation, I was told no. But now we can get an extension for the athletic fields. Yeah, you can always get extension. Okay, that's not what I was told before. Why wouldn't we just, why wouldn't we go forward with it though, just in case and then it's done and isn't that what we eventually want it for anyways? We can always go forward and after March, okay. if that turns out to be the case. Right, I just didn't know, we're having the hearing right now, why we just couldn't. What does it hurt, I guess? Well, it sends a message to the community that we're you know, perhaps not taking this uh, tax measure seriously, that we're proposing spending funds on stuff that they may not want to approve. So I think it's more prudent not to do it at this time. Will this require another public hearing closer to the date? Or does this public hearing stand? No, we would, we would start over with it. Start over the whole yeah. project. Mm -hmm. The process, if we approve this, can we then just table it afterwards? I mean, I guess my concern would be going back to another public hearing in a, in a longer method of approval if we decide to at one point go forward with this. I, I still don't see the, the, the need to move forward with this at this time with the measure that's going to be on the ballot. It doesn't make sense to me that we would say, okay, yes, we're going to go through and rezone it. We've got these big plans. And then if it doesn't work uh, in the overall community's interest with the results on in March, then what do you, what are we saying then? Then we rezone it again. So how does that look? So it's right same now it's general business. business. It looks the same as, same it, does as right it does right now. What's the difference? Well, no, because that if, this, if we back. can't move forward with it and it's it's left as general business, then I have an opportunity to do something with it. 
an opportunity to sell pieces of it in order to develop some portion of it. There is no action required tonight, as this is only a public hearing. It will stay in committee through to next term. Um, so next term on presum presumptively December 4th, the Community and Economic Development Committee at that time will have to decide whether to potentially make a motion to postpone until after the March election to kill it and start over again or to keep it moving forward. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the public hearing? Mr. Osborne. <coughs> Chuck Osborne, 307 Fairview Street, Southeast North Canton, Ohio. To answer Mr. McLeister's question about development, over 20 years ago, I met with Mr. Caprio when I was on council. He told me right up front the mining situation out there basically precludes any kind of development. You'd have to put in a lot of heavy uh, concrete stanchions or whatever. So that was from the horse's mouth. Okay. Appreciate it. I don't know why the city paid what it did for that 11 acres, I think it was 11 acres, because it's literally worthless property. Here in the last year, I went down and talked to the uh, auditor's office, and uh, they kind of agreed. But anyway, it's only tax dollars. Thank you. This will be taken up by the next council. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. The vote moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We'll take a short recess and then start the regular council meeting.
now call to order the City Council meeting of November 27th, 2023. The time is 7.01 p.m. Uh, opening prayer. Jamie. All right, we could please rise. This was a prayer that was given two years ago on the first meeting of this council by uh, Daryl Revolt. And uh, although he's not the author of said prayer, but this prayer has meant a lot to me. It's something I have hanging up in my office and I recite it frequently and I hope you take a lot from it as well. So this is from Harry S. Truman, uh, former president of the United States. O oh, almighty and everlasting God, creator of heaven, earth, and universe, help me to be, to think, to act what is right, because it is right. Make me truthful, honest, and honorable in all things. Make me intellectually honest for the sake of right and honor without thought of reward uh, to me. Give me the ability to be charitable, forgiving and patient with my fellow men. Help me to understand their motives and their shortcomings, even as thou understandest mine. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Betty, would you please call the roll? Member Matheny. Here. Member Wyrick. Here. Member McLeister. Here. Member Waring. Here. Member Shroyan. Here. Member Revolt. Here. Member Orr. Here. Seven present. I have a motion and a second to approve a codification updates to chapters 1127, 1301, 1302 as submitted. Revolt moves. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And kind of a motion and a second to approve the legislative year 2023 annual report uh, subject to changes necessitated by actions of council taken tonight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. <coughs> okay. Uh, at this time, members of the public wishing to address council may do so. Each speaker will be given five minutes. Comments shall be limited to items appearing on tonight's agenda only. Uh, the rules for, for speaking will appear on both screens, and this will serve as the only warning for everyone in attendance. Any violation of the rules will result in ejection from the premises. Uh, public speaks, uh, legislative items appearing on tonight's agenda only. Any wishing to uh, uh, speak, please um, go up to the podium. Osborne, 307 Fairview Street, Southeast, North Canton, Ohio. Don't know where to start this uh, tax credit. Started out on shaky ground without even being on the agenda back on November 6th. Put on the agenda on the 13th. And repeat the table that night. Now we're looking at a uh, quarter percent increase in income tax from one and a half to one and three quarter. And tonight's our second reading. I uh, made a quick call today. I haven't devoted as much research time in this as I normally would. I called the city of Louisville to find out their history on their income tax. Do you know they've had a 2% income tax since the 70s, and in recent years, they've uh, tweaked it by using tax credits. It used to be they had 100% tax credit. Then they went to 50% uh, here, and now they're, I think, a 60% tax credit. This, this quarter percent increase is a political decision. I'd like to know what kind of input we're getting from our finance director here. No numbers are actually being made available to the public. We have to read them in the repository, what this generates. But a quarter percent, and Mr. Revolt pointed out, this will generate, what'd you say, $100 a year for a $40,000 a year salary? Now, for the people making the 40000 that's not peanuts. But in the grand scheme of things, 
Is that going to bail us out of our predicament? And then to give a credit, you're giving a credit for anything one and a half and below. That works, works out to be an 80% income tax credit. Is anybody looking at the bigger picture and how we can extricate ourselves out of this financial mess? As I've said previously, I don't know why this hasn't been brought up 15 years ago when Hoover left. And then for the, I have to applaud Mr. Orr, looking at the bigger picture and longer term, for the response that, oh, if that isn't enough, we'll just put it back on the ballot again. Do the people want to be bombarded every couple of years? Oh, we need to raise the income tax rate again. And you don't even know if it's going to pass. You're going to have to give them a reason to vote for this. You need a 2% income tax rate. And with outside workers paying a half a percent to generate any decent revenue for the city. It's not doing you much good if you raise it a minuscule amount, a quarter percent, and then you're going to give a tax credit of 86%, 87%. This is just nothing but politics up here. Nothing but pure politics. How many of you would step up and sacrifice another election in office to do the right thing? Mrs. Warren raised such hysteria with the idea that, oh my God, I'm going to lose my 1.5% tax credit, which for her husband, making $152,000 next year, is a chunk of change. But I don't think it's going to hurt their pocketbooks. I forked over almost $8,000 of my own money, and I'm on Social Security to educate the public that four-year terms were not in their best interest. So you might look around at your neighboring communities at 2% or higher and do better than this. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council? on to old business. Uh, ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 91-2023. An ordinance amending Chapter 192, Income Tax, of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton in order to amend the maximum credits for taxes paid to other municipalities. Okay. okay. Um, any more thoughts or comments on this? So we're voting to suspend the rules of council requiring three readings on this tonight? Yes, we're going to. Okay. And this is about the tax one, credit. The tax credit of 1%. Yep. One, 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 and and one, and one and a half. One and a half percent. Right. Yeah. Has nothing to do with us increasing the tax credit. No. no. It has nothing. Okay. Nope. Just want to make sure. Okay. Um, can I have a motion and a second to adopt the second reading of Ordinance 91-2023? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And can I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council requiring three readings? So moved. Revolt seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
motion carries. <coughs> and uh, motion and a second to adopt ordinance 91-2023 under suspension of the rules. So moved. Who votes seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Ben, would you please read the title of ordinance 93-2023? An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of North Canton to enter into an agreement with the North Canton Community Improvement Corporation for the conveyance of the real property known as parts of Outlot 274 and Outlot 273 in the city of North Canton, Stark County, parcel number 9208445, from the city to the North Canton Community Improvement Corporation. All right, stop me. Sure. Are there any other questions on this? All right, seeing that I move to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 94-2023? An ordinance amending Chapter 192, Income Tax, of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton in order to ensure compliance with changes in state law. All right, Steph. We are just following the law. Any issues, concerns? Seeing that, I move to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 95-2023? An ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance of the City of North Canton to make final appropriation amendments for current expenses and related one-time advances and or permanent transfers of monies made to various funds needed during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023 and within the available resources in order to balance and close the fiscal year. All right, Stephanie. Okay, I think we are just making sure that everything is whole and sound. Been looking at those numbers for a long time. I move to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 96-2023? An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an extension agreement in the collective bargaining process by and between the City of North Canton and Fraternal Order of Police, Ohio Labor Council Incorporated, Police Lieutenants and Sergeants, the Ohio Patrolman's Benevolent Association Patrolman, and or the Ohio Patrolman's Benevolent Association full-time dispatcher slash lead dispatcher if negotiations continue past December 31st, 2023 and result in a mediation conducted by the Ohio State Employment Relations Board. Okay, personnel and safety, David. So as stated in the title, should the agreement not be reached by December 31st, we continue under the existing contract until such time as uh, mediation will be completed. So it's just a precautionary measure. How's it moving along? Is it going pretty good? It wouldn't be appropriate to address in this form. Okay. I'll make a motion to adopt the third reading of Ordinance 96-2023. Revolt seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 97-2023? An ordinance authorizing the vacation of a portion of Ashland Street Southwest from the west right-of-way of Ambler Avenue Southwest to the west line of parcel number 9208625 within the corporate limits of the city of North Canton. <coughs> Street and Alley, this is my committee. Uh, nothing new on this. Uh, both parties agreed um, to the petition before um, Daryl, this is over in your neck of the woods there, and it's just the vacation of an alley. Yeah, this was a paper street that was planted out in, I think, near over 100 years ago, 1913. It was part of the original neighborhood. It was never developed, and uh, as has happened before, the city is uh, surrendering ownership of some of those paper properties. Okay, I move that we adopt. Revolt seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Carries. Uh, ben, would you please read the title of Ordinance 98-2023? An ordinance amending Chapter 192, Income Tax, of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton to increase the rate of municipal income tax from 1.5% to 1.75% beginning January 1st, 2025, for the purpose of providing funds for the purposes of general municipal operations, maintenance, new equipment, extension and enlargement of municipal services and facilities, and capital improvement. Okay, finance the property, Stephanie. Okay, um, so we have talked about this, and like, I think the only thing that the only things that Mr. Osborne said was true is it has been quick. Um, we heard this um, right after the first of November. 
uh, and so looking at this, um, it has, it's gone quickly and we've debated it, um, uh, I guess I would say a small amount um, concerning what, what kind of implications come from it. Um, so I think we're gonna have debate again about it uh, tonight. And I guess what I think is interesting is, is last week we all left saying, except for John, um, hey, we were okay with the 1.75, we were okay with the 0.25 not being, um, having people pay that. Um, and then I, I did get numbers, so Chuck, you were wrong about that. Gina has many numbers that she can share with you, um, listing different scenarios. And I had those, those numbers prior um, to the first reading as well. Um, I think that this, this one, and, and Robert, you asked me last week too, why didn't we go for 2%? I don't even know what Mr. Osborne means by saying it's political. Whenever anyone puts any sort of tax, you're not gonna be liked, you're not gonna be favored, it has nothing to do with politics. It's looking at what you need. So when we did that, the, the, this moving it to 1.75 and then doing a reciprocity of no more than 0.25 um, additional, it did give us about a 1.6 million um, amount, which filled a, a hole. Um, it filled an initial hole. Did it allow us to um, have a firehouse? No, but we don't have specs on that right now. And we will, because you'll have three months to look at this and see that. We had a fire um, facilities plan that I didn't think was concrete at all um, about what we needed and what was said and different um, individuals um, spoke at that meeting about that. Um, so maybe that needs to be kind of vetted out more, I don't know. But I feel like the 1.6, it was a compromise. And when we had all those people speak and there were probably 80 to 100 in attendance that night, um, they asked for us to be fair and um, compromise. And I felt like that's what we did that week. And so I feel like asking for more at this, and I would never presume to be like Mr. Osborne and put myself in anyone else's shoes and say what they have or don't have. But I do feel like our citizens um, they are taxed high for property taxes and they do support different things so i feel like this filled that gap i think we don't have any new numbers or anything nothing has been enumerated to me i'm the finance chair and i wasn't called this week no one touched base with me i was the only one that responded to an email about the figures um and so i thought we were moving forward with, with what we all had said last week and um and people a hundred percent can change their mind i get that that that's that's reasonable but I feel like it sets, um, it makes us look like, I guess like we're confused. We don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and, and maybe because we've had to react so fast. So um, I, would, I would like to see it stay at the 1.75, just as we discussed last time, yesterday. I get it doesn't give us carte blanche to move to, I think at the new number, if we move it to 2%, and then do the reciprocity. I think it gives us 4.6 million, which um, that's a lot of money. Like when you said um, to not ask the citizens, I guess I feel like they do want to be asked. Um, so that's what I'm doing, is I'm asking them. And it doesn't matter what I say because I'm so thrilled we're taking it to the voters and we'll see what they say. But I, I, think, I think we had a good shot of passing the 1.75 and I don't know about the two. We'll find out. So I know this conversation and thoughts. So, John, I know you wanted to speak. And would you like to go first, Pat? Yeah, I'll go first since uh, I did most of the phone calling. Uh, on oh, I didn't get one phone call. Hey, it's, it's the same thing I told Soretta. You got a phone No, nope, I did. Everything was good. Call. I responded to emails. I 100%. applaud council's it's effort the way you do it. to get this far. Uh, it's a difficult issue that, when properly research can lead you to a different conclusion. You know, you've often heard the old expression, you know, that you know, bills and legislation that gets passed is kind of like making sausage. There's a lot of stuff that goes in it. You're not quite sure what you're going to have at the end, but you go through the process of having a discussion. Um, I agree that this uh, proposal has not been discussed publicly in a way that really uh, addresses the numbers here and so you know the question that is really before us is uh, you know what is your vision for where this community needs to be 
do you want it to be the beacon in the hill in Stark County? Or do we just want to be another average city? We've prided ourselves for 20 plus years on being this place to come work, live, and play, a destination kind of location. And we're finally, I think, we're reaching some milestones uh, in that effort. But in order to continue with that, you have to have funding. And the proposal before you, uh, and that's why I'm weighing in now, because I reserved my comments from last week. Again, I applaud Council for getting to this point. John and Dave both said last week that they had reservations about this plan, that it didn't get the requisite number that we were, uh, administration and finance were saying that was necessary to fund the initiatives that are needed in this community. Um, and uh, as a result, it's, it's uh, as I continue to talk here, it's going to be, you know, my uh, suggestion, ultimately you're the decision makers, uh, that we go to 2% uh, on this. So 1.6 is if you go to quarter percent. We looked at this today, if we do a half a percent, go from one and a half to two, leave the reciprocity at 1.5. So that is 3.6 is what that generates. And uh, the 3.6 yeah, is a lot of money. We acknowledge that, but it's to go for things that are needed in this community. And you know, I, at the request of you know a member of council, we prepared kind of a slide that kind of just makes us you know commit that these are the things that we want to uh, to fund. And at the top of that list is a fire EMS. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the council member feels that this was uh, insufficiently uh, presented. Uh, this this need hasn't changed since 2018 when we did the last one. So for us to say that we're not sure what the plan is, no, we have the plan. The plan is we need a fire EMS facility. Question is, why? You know, this is not for just somebody to have a name on the building or something like that. Um, this is about, you know, who do you want breathing down your neck? We have a fire department that is almost equally staffed women to men. We have to provide equal facilities under the law. A building constructed in 1970 does not do that. That has to be remedied or we will be answering to, the, to somebody. Plaintiff's counsels, Department of Justice, Civil Rights Commission, whoever it might be. These are things that we can fix. It needs to be fixed. We have fire uh, employees that can't properly uh, decontaminate due to a structure fire that they're required to do. When are we going to address that concern? Electric vehicles. Have you read the stuff on electric vehicles? If there's an electric vehicle fire and the fire department has to go put this out, the toxicity that comes from this, and how are they going to decontaminate? Are we going to send them over to some other facility to do that? No, these are things that we have to do. Uh, we've laid out the cost side of it. It's more expensive to run two stations. You're doubling up on equipment. There's a, we've had the Fitch study come in and explain this to all of us, that there's too much redundancy, too many pieces of equipment. They could be done a little bit more streamlined. We should be trans... Uh, or, Transforming uh, into a full-time fire department. Transition. Transitioning into a full-time fire department. Uh, so that we can cut down on, you know, and eliminate the, the overtime cost that comes with trying to use a fleet of part-timers that have become increasingly impossible to, to keep here. Because everybody wants the full-time job and they go to other places where they can get the hours. We've done all this stuff and we are moving forward with that plan. We are going to restructure. We are going to make things better. We owe that to the community. But we also need a place to do it in. Um, so, <clears throat> again, I applaud council for taking this effort. I applaud the, chairman, the chairperson of the committee for getting us to that next step because at that first step, we were at nothing. Now we have a path forward. I'm just suggesting that we actually tweak it to an amount that when you give it to the voters, that you can say with a straight face, this will fund these six things up here. This is what we're trying to do. This will fund it. 
why do we want to send them something that is a half measure, that doesn't get there? Only for them to say they go through the heroic effort, and I agree with some of the comments from earlier, it's not a given that this would pass. But we're going to sure try to do our best to explain to the community these things, what we're trying to do with these money, so they don't think that it's just going uh, you know, for nothing. Um, so you know, we've already, you know, through this compromise, postponed the effective date of this to January of 25. So we realistically won't be seeing funds from this until you know, more, most likely the end of 25 into 26 to be, to be realistic. Um, so the current plan, I think, needs to be modified to, to reflect that this is the amount that's needed, 3.6. <clears throat> to, get, to get us where we want to go. So one, we want to build a single combined fire EMS facility coupled with downsizing the department's fleet and overtime hours. It's not just building a facility and just saying business as usual. No, we need to be more efficient. <clears throat> we want to resolve the facility's needs of the police department. We want to fill the one and a half million dollar funding gap in the city's operating budget. And you know, our commitment is that we are not going to sacrifice fire, EMS, and police. Uh, this administration, this mayor is committed to making sure that those facilities uh, and those services that we provide are not affected. We will cut other areas. We also, in number four, we want to reprioritize the paving of residential roadways. We know that they don't get enough. We know that we're only doing a mile and a half a year. We know that it needs to be more. What happens this, if this is a tough winter? The roads deteriorate. <clears throat> what are you going to do about it? 350000 from the levy that comes in annually is not going to pay more than another mile of road. And that's assuming you know, we've got to look at those bids when they come in. And each year they've been, they've been getting less and less mileage and more and more cost. Uh, we want to resolve the Dogwood Pool Facility. We want a pool. We want a pool. How do we get that? Well, we need money to get it. If we don't have it, then we can't get it. Because if this um, warranty runs out on this pool, that's in three years. We're good for three years, but once that warranty's out, we're done. So that's about the time it takes for this all to go into place, based on what we've uh, proposed here tonight as far as delaying uh, effectiveness until 2025. Uh, and we want to invest in parks development and infrastructure as requested by residents in the not only the 2023 community survey, but every community survey. This is something that the community wants. And we get a hell of a lot more responses than we do for people that show up here. I put a lot of stock in that. That's what they want. Well, then, then we should be moving towards trying to, to get those things. But as we heard in the public hearing before, I can't in good conscience put that forward if we're not going to have, have money. It gives the wrong impression to people that they think that we would just move forward willy-nilly, develop the park anyway, even though we're facing this shortfall. So we have to let the voters um, weigh in and make that decision. But whether it's 1.75 or whether it's 2.0, uh, should this matter not pass in November, we will, in March, we will be back here discussing this. We will be back <coughs> here discussing how we're going to do this. And it makes sense that you know, you know what you're facing at the ballot box. It's a half a percent. If you haven't been paying for your share of services, it's going to cost you half a percent. And those um, that have been shouldering the burden at one and a half, you're going to be asked to pay an extra half. I can't address the inequities of the past, but I can deal with the future. And what we're trying to do is build a better uh, community. And it's that sense of uh, giving to the community that we're, we're hoping that, the, that the, uh, the community electorate at large will understand and grant us uh, a favorable uh, opinion uh, come March. And between now and then, we will get all the information out concerning you know, where the fire station would be built, what's it going to look like, 
uh, how much does it cost? That's all being done right now. That will be out you know, shortly, probably right after the first year. Everybody will be informed as to what it is. Um, that was a, something that uh, did not work the last time, uh, but we've learned from that, and we certainly will be providing that information and getting it out in lots of different places on that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I talked with the mayor this afternoon. I think he uh, expressed an interest to, to have a few comments on this subject as well tonight. It's not just me talking. But, uh, I'm gonna, John, if you don't, think, Stephanie, if you don't mind, I'm going to let the mayors go next. Sure. Yep, thank you. Well, uh, again, going back, Steph, when we first heard them all talk about, what, November 1st, somewhere around there? November uh, 8th. November 8th, that meeting. At any rate, uh, we heard from the public, and uh, I understand council did go back, think, uh, can we agree to a compromise of some kind? Um, the one and three quarter percent was a step, but I really feel that the uh, for us to really have a clear understanding of the goals and realize the steps needed to reach these goals, I think the two percent income tax increase is the way to go. Uh, you know, I asked these questions to myself, uh, and just bear with me. Uh, as a Rotarian, there's four questions that we talk about all the time. You know, is it the truth? Well, the truth of the matter is, the, I don't believe the one point, uh, the one to three quarter is going to fulfill the goals that we are trying to get to, okay? Um, is it fair to all concerned? I think Mr. DiRoyo said it uh, very well. Uh, we're trying to make it fair to all concerned. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Yes and no. Depends on your point of view on this increase and how it's going to benefit us in the long run. And again, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I, I think about those things. And in the long run, it will be beneficial. I really do believe this. That we're, I think about the, I think about the past. Okay, and we have gone through a lot of change over the last four years, all of us here, and change for the city. And yes, it may bring uh, uncertainty at times, all right, but I wrote down change can also be bring opportunity. And we're at a uh, crossroads here that we have to make a decision, council has to make a decision how we're gonna go forward and making the, these goals become realized and what the steps are needed to reach these goals. And I think, I believe that the uh, going with a 2% income tax is to be put to the voters and let them decide how they want to see our city go forward. Uh, you know, folks, I, we all live in a wonderful, we have a wonderful city here. And, uh, you know, again, we want people to live, work, play, retire here, engage. And, uh, but over time, we have inherited some issues here that we've been trying to correct for many years now. This council has done well in correcting many things from zoning to other issues that we have before us. But uh, uh, for us to continue and grow and advance our city, uh, I think we're at a crossroads where we need to go for a 2% income tax request and put that to the voters for them to decide uh, for the for the, uh, for the long, long term here. Uh, I like this one quote from John F. Kennedy, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. I don't wanna miss the future. I think we've been growing on progress and prosperity. I think the two go together. And uh, oftentimes when I'm out in, in public or I get the phone call and I converse with Mr. Diorio, the questions that are asked of us, you know, uh, it's not so much about the income tax. It is, do you have any land available for us? Uh, I've got three acres, I need three acres for an engineering firm, I need to be able to put a 15 ton crane in there for equipment. Where am I gonna find three acres in our city? That, you know, that's one of the questions. And then, 
I think you've done well in helping us uh, through planning and zoning. How fast can we get things going for us? Okay, if we have a project, how do we come to you? What's the, what are the hurdles we're going to have to face? How do we uh, bring our company to to your community? Uh, those are the things that those are the questions we get. It's not always so much about the income tax. And when I think about our shared agreement with Jackson, trying to get more property for us so that we can have economic development, bring more income tax in, provide jobs, and for you know for our community. Uh, I think all this plays in, in the bigger picture of things. So uh, again, I feel very strongly about going forward with a recommendation. I, my recommendation would be for council to uh, consider going with a 2% uh, and let, put that on the uh, ballot for March. And uh, you know, <laughs> we don't move the speed of federal government, <laughs> okay? I think what we've tried to do over the last few years is move at the speed of city government, okay? We try to get things done. And, uh, uh, and things do happen. And we might not always have the three readings like we normally have. And things, decisions have to be made. And we have to go forward. Again, we don't move at the speed of federal government. We're called upon to make decisions. And we have to go forward with those decisions, I think, for the greater good of the community. I know that's a philosophical point of view, but I still feel that the decisions that we make, the decisions I have been involved with, I've tried to make them for the betterment of our community. I know I'm not going to please everybody. We are not going to please everybody. I think we all understand that. But our goal is, how are we going to accomplish well, let me say, how are we going to accomplish the goals that we're putting out for ourselves? And uh, uh, without going any further, you know, I just feel that uh, uh, that going with a 2% at this time, put it out to the voters, let them tell us yes or no, and uh, uh, so that we will have a future for the generations, you know, uh, to come after us. Prosperity and progress, I think they go together. And, uh, you know, for 30, I don't know, uh, Mr. Revolt, <laughs> how long have we had our one and a half income tax? About 30 years, you would say? Well, I think the, uh, yeah, I think it went to one and a half in 71. 71? Uh, we've done well, okay. And going to one and three quarter. Started at one. Okay. Going to one and three quarter, I think, was a good step. But, folks, I really think we've got to take it one step and go for a 2% to help fund our, our, our city and to take the best care we can, to do the best we can for our community. So uh, with that, I yield the floor. Thank you for allowing me to uh, participate. Go ahead. Well, yes, I voted no last week because I did some research looking at it. And the voters, or not, well, the voters that came and spoke they just wanted to have an opportunity to vote on this. We were going to just, you know, vote on that, what was it, 25 or 50 percent and slide it under the table. No, they wanted uh, their voice to be heard. Now they will have a chance to vote this down, or to vote this, and, um, you know, it's a win-win. What we failed to do okay, I feel, all right, is they want involved in the city. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. It's a few less than we've had in the past couple of weeks. I think we should have a committee on what's their vision of the city. Stephanie has her vision. Matt has his. Jamie, we all have visions. They could be different all the way around. So I think we should, you know, go to the 2%, start up a committee, I'll head it, if you, no one else wants to, there should be two or three members of council on it, and we get the public. And if the public doesn't come out to support this, no, they, they will support this. And uh, I, deep down in my heart, I know this will pass, you know, and um, 
it's the right thing to do. We heard, you know, Kent became a dead town because it's a two and a half percent. No, Kent became a dead town because of one thing, Bell and Village. And that happened back in the in the seventies. You know, you know, Canton's lost almost fifty percent of their population. Okay, we haven't done that. We're steady. You know, so my vision of the city, you know, is different from maybe some of yours. I, I, I like, love the city that I live in. The schools are strong. The police are strong. The fire is strong, you know. Plus, Pat didn't even mention, uh, we're going to save some money, probably a couple hundred thousand dollars, by doing one easy cut on... We don't need to send all these vehicles out to the fire or rescue or something of that nature. We're averaging three or four vehicles. Are you aware of that? That's got to cost money, okay? If they start doing the right thing, and we're just, we're, you know, it's, we're not changing anything. We're just going to be better managers. Each department head will be a better manager. And there's going to be cuts. There still will be cuts. Pat said we're not going to get this money if it passes till the end of 25 to the, be to the beginning of 26. And we're going to be short next, next year probably, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yes. That's why we would make cuts. Yep. And, you know, the people that came out, one guy said, hey, I'll cut the police department. One, you know, no, you don't want to cut. This is a safe town. Our police is one of the reasons people move here. The schools are another, and the convenience. And we have a great town here. So I would uh, agree with them to go to 2%. Uh, hey, John, if I may. Uh, a committee might be an avenue to go through, but I, I put a lot of value into our uh, master plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I as, the, as a guideline for us, because I think there are some, survey. I think there are some visionary. The, survey. And the, the survey, survey is the big thing. Oh. Okay. And how many people in the city, what percentage of the people have filled out that survey? Ben? I defer to clerk. Is it? Hold on. Wow. Well, I'm saying this. At least, uh, at least with the master plan, it gave us a, 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 a pathway. That's all I'm saying. If you want to have a committee, you make a committee. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I just thought. I mean, I think a master plan is what you're suggesting because it yeah, was a open master to plan made by us, Don, us paying money <coughs> to a committee, even though we took donations and stuff of that nature. Well, we had ten quality people on that committee. Well, I, okay, yeah. Yeah. I got that, that's, it. I understand. But I think it would be see the people would see that we're giving back, giving them an opportunity. Some people are intimidated by coming to council, you know. But uh, there's so much more we can do, you know. And when this levy goes out, you know, maybe friends of passing, you know, whatever issue it is or what it will be, we need to start developing that and stuff of that nature. We have to do our homework. What do we got, about 150 days? 113. 113 days to the election. So, that's what you count. So, but yeah, well, you know, whatever. I, uh, we just need to hear more. It was great hearing from all those people. But we don't necessarily always hear from them. So if I might throw some things out there. I think um, while you were very vocal last week at the meeting and voted no right. because of what you just uh, stated, that we, you felt the need to go to 2%, um, I remained silent. Mm -hmm. But I think my... I'm not going to say I didn't sleep last Monday night, but um, it was lingering on my mind. And I made a number of phone calls expressing that to some of my colleagues, and um, I got thinking that the measure was put forth, the 1.75 was just not going to be enough. Nobody goes out and puts signs in the yard and talks to neighbors with the hopes of one day being able to suggest raising taxes. And believe me when I say that was not on my priority list when I ran for council, but the sad reality is I think we're here. I don't think I know a single 
friend or family member who has not been affected financially by the, the environment that we're in, the poor policies out of Washington, D.C. Um, that's a topic of another conversation. The city is not immune to that. And I think that with going to the 2%, the suggestion from the administration, I think that puts us on a firmer path. And I think what we heard a couple weeks ago was is that the public wants to weigh in. And so this is not the seven of us voting to impose an additional income tax. This is allowing us, this is us voting to put it out there for the residents of this city to decide what path they want to move forward. Do they want to continue moving on in a, I think, what was it, a beacon of hope? Is that was a terminology I heard down the other end of the table? If we want to keep moving in that direction or if we want to slip into media. Hours. So while I was not willing or excited to do this last week after looking at some numbers that came from Gina. Thank you very much. Um, I, I support this move to 2%. And I will add, since nobody else has spoken up or raised their hand since, as somebody who has needed emergency services within the past week, cutting emergency services is not the way to go. Thank you. I'll go. Um, I wasn't excited to vote yes on 1.75 last week. I think, you know, when I did it, I'm like, this is really disappointing. This is where we are. This is where we are. This is what, you know, we, what was brought to the table. So I am in favor of changing it to the 2% um, because it is going to the ballot. It's not our decision to make. But I think we have to make it very clear what this, what will be funded because of this, yeah. and what will mm -hmm. be cut if we do, if this does not pass. Um, I, I appreciate the slide, listing things out. Um, I appreciate when I spoke with Patrick earlier today. He said that you know this will give us a public pool. Um, we also discussed that. Uh, City Council never voted on the facilities plan that is listed on the website as a supplement to the 2023 North Canton Master Plan that came to us, you know, whenever, uh, <coughs> November 6th or 7th meeting. So there are some things in there that um, administration has assured me can be potentially changed, such as displacing the businesses that are at 1206 main um, that possibly that is not the best location for city hall to move to um, but it was the least expensive option so with our budget issues um, it would have made sense but hopefully we can find a better solution than that um, and then i would just say i know that there is a parks master plan that was part of the 2024 budget and i I think it's incredibly important that we move forward with that plan, even if we're not going to be able to fund all of the things in it potentially, because we have to show this is what it will fund. This is, you know, we can't keep creating parks ideas and having architects and doing all of the things and then not moving forward. We, we have to stop that. So I think we've got to prioritize those things. We've got to do that parks master plan um, and make that part of the selling of the same context. That's all. So, the gravity of this situation is immense. There's a lot to be weighed here. Could there be legal issues in the future? Could be. If we don't move forward. The burden's on the seven of us here to make the decision on what we want to take to the ballot. The residents were very clear that they wanted to have a voice in this situation. We want to give them that voice. My management background tells me that, that good leadership, there's hard decisions that have to be made. What's the legacy of this council going to be? Are we going to plan for the future for the residents of North Canton, or are we going to push things further down the road? And if we continue to push, things are going to get more expensive, things are not going to be of the caliber and the quality that we all moved here for. Final decision will be on the residents if they choose to fund this. The money for the city is one to two years out. 
if we wait or if we don't have the funding, if we continue to push off the list that I gave last week and the additional items, I fear that we didn't make the hard decision of pushing this 2% to the voters, remaining and keeping the 1.5% yes. credit back. Because if it doesn't pass, we're going to have to revisit the reciprocity issue again. Mm -hmm. And that's a much harder decision. But the residents need to be aware. They need to be informed so that they can make the decisions that's best for them and that's best for the city. Thank you. Let's go. Um, I'm not enthusiastic about this. I mean, I'm not enthusiastic about raising taxes in any format, but, but it appears to be a necessity. And I think it is as to what type of vision you have for the city. And all of ours might be, as you said, John, they might be different. Um, <clears throat> I like to think that we're, we're better than other communities. I mean, that's why I live here. So um, I'm, I'm not going to stand in the way from, from putting anything in the hands of the voters. I mean, that's, that's ultimate, ultimately, I think, what we're going to do. We're going to put something in the hands of the voters. So our decision is... From what I just heard, are we going to do it at 2% or are we going to do it at, at 1.75? Well, I'd like to uh, propose that we just do it at the 2%. Make a change to that. Two percent. Uh, Can I ask a question, Patrick? Yes. So, in that, and I did appreciate that slide. Um, Gina had supplied numbers before, and we had seen them. And you know, and I don't even know if sometimes. I'm not sure it's the vision. Like, I think we all want to see the city thrive. I don't think so, by someone saying, "Oh, I don't want to go another." 0.25 percent of someone is saying like I want the city to stay in mediocrity I want to see it you know wither away <coughs> I don't think anyone is like that um, we weren't even talking about this three months ago so to imply that anybody <laughs> thinks differently I think about that is um, is not true I, I feel I don't even think the citizens that came here and voiced their concerns were like that they weren't those aren't people that don't want to see North Canton thrive we're, we're all in that same boat so I don't want to pit people against um, individuals in that realm. Um, I think we have to get away, though, from the conversation. I don't think you're ever going to win um, the media um, or, 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 I guess, PR if we keep saying that we are divided like that. And some people paid for services and some people didn't. There's no magic line that we cross over in someone's services if, if you are in, in Jackson Township. You sure as better hope that someone, if something happens at the mall, is going to come and get you, and you live in North Canton. And I know we receive many funds from people who work in the city but live in Jackson. And they could very well say, well, our property taxes are huge. Why are we paying that? I mean, it goes both ways. That's what reciprocity has been about. This is a state formula. So I want that conversation to stop. You heard the people. They felt that they were paying a very fair income tax and that people were very angry that that was being portrayed like that. That will not win us any, any, any votes, I can guarantee you that. So I do think we need to come together as, <coughs> as a united front in that regard. I just think sometimes we think of it differently and that's great. You know, this council has been, um, I guess, chastised for always agreeing on everything and so that's okay. This council get chastised for not asking enough questions. So let's do that and maybe that's on us you know, somebody said, oh, they had to come in and fix this because council didn't. I'm not sure about that, but by goodness, we will, I hope all of us ask a lot more questions in the future because if, if that's a scenario that's being painted, we will make sure to ask those questions. So um, Patrick, the one question I had is you had commented about the street and levy. So the streets and um, paving. So we have that levy up in November. We'll still go forward with that, correct? Um, or do you think not? 
Well, I think if the voters were to pass this in March, uh, what is being proposed as far as going to 2%, I think that the, the, the council could be in a position where we don't go to the ballot with that, that we, that we eliminate that, and that's why it's on, um, that we would commit to more residential roads with this level of funding, that we could give uh, <coughs> uh, people that pay the property tax you know, an ability to you know, reduce the cost of home ownership. So that's about 390000 So you're saying there'd be the about possibility. Is that right? Oh, I, I would say that we would recommend that. Okay, that's good. That's what I wanted to hear. And then there was another question. Oh, in regards to the pool. So we've had a lot of debate about the pool. And we now know that with the school levy, um, the, the new middle school is going to butt up right to that. So is it fair to ask, I guess, in regards to that, if you're saying that the pool is, is something we want to consider, is that something um, that we would even think about possibly moving? And this would allow us additional monies to maybe even move it if the school all of a sudden said, hey, we would love to have that piece of property, you know, something like that. Well, I think that's great forward thinking. Um, um, we know this, that, you know, I'm not sure 100% where the school is going to be built. All right? yeah. I think there's some geotechnic stuff that they have to do to kind of really fine tune that. There's some historians in town that you know, would suggest that uh, in the front of the school that it always wasn't as nice looking as it is now and that there was a lot of stuff dumped there over the years. Uh, so that'll, that'll have to be investigated and maybe it turns out fine. Um, but what we do know is that if they follow the business model that they've established where they take, you know, two years to design, one to build, it's three years. <coughs> that would coincide well with the situation at our pool. We know that we're going to have to rebuild the pool. It isn't a matter of doing a liner at this point. We know that. Um, and so if you're going to rebuild it, you're going to have to do it all to ADA compliance issues today. Uh, and we would probably, you know, uh, design it so that more people could be in the pool at the same time rather than right now it's all concentrated in a smaller area. And to the extent that the school, you know, would be interested in acquiring that property that would certainly help us fund um, the relocation of that uh, facility uh, it would make it you know, better and maybe easier to use. So there's a lot of conversations that yeah. are going on behind the scene about putting together various packages of what can we horse trade, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was a very appropriate question. Okay. Yeah, so those are just two because I think it is important that those are the questions and that, that first slide. I think, I think one of the things, we have had so much on the agenda the first time. I mean, purpose of providing funds for maintenance, operation, new equipment, extension, like, like there was just so much. And so to break it down into five, I think it helps and is more clear. And again, if, if it can be a united and not this or that, or um, this group, that group, if these people want this, I mean, I think in this day and age, we'll be, we'll be lucky, right? To get an income tax pa passed. Yeah, and I would, just, I would just add to that, you and John are bringing up a good point. You know, when we talk about whether there's a committee or whether people that showed up here, I mean, let's all keep this in perspective, okay? so. Yes, we had a we had a large, very nice turnout a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, uh, say 150 people showed. Uh, that left that represents you know less than one tenth of one percent of the group that was affected. My point to all of you is, because you'll all be here a lot longer, is that you need to put multiple data gathering strategies together, not just the people that come to public speaks. Not just to come out on one issue, not just from a committee, not just from a master plan, not just from the survey, but everything. Get it all together. And then there's other things that we should go further with soliciting that opinion. And I think then that would help you all make better, you know, more informed decisions because you'd have a better sense of what the community feels rather than just those that you know are strongly motivated. But it's just so hard, right, reaching people? Oh, it is. Because people don't get their repository as much anymore. They don't listen to their paper. And so there's a few, sometimes toxic, sometimes non-toxic, 
Facebook groups. And when you look at the percentage of people that actually elect individuals, it's so small. So when you look at some of those that do come out, people don't come out. I mean, John, I don't know if you remember, but when we did the master plan, it was those of us sitting in this room, I don't know, maybe eight other people, maybe on good night 12. Mm -hmm. And it was again and again and again. And this is the way, way groups are these days. And so unfortunately, you do kind of sometimes have to listen, I think, to those that actually show up when typically nobody shows up. I mean, they don't show up to, to vote. You can look at how different races went last mm -hmm. November. John. I think you, there's a combined vision here that you mentioned before. Because you've all, all of us have chosen to faithfully serve this community. Correct. Okay. And I think our vision overall is we really humbly, we want to make this a better place. This is one of the avenues that comes before council. Okay. That uh, it's, uh, you know, the, there's those occasions where it's always the right time to make the right decision. I can't take a, a uh, honor for that quote. That's from Dr. Martin Luther King. And I try to think about that in my daily activities being in the office. The time is always right to do the right thing. And I think that is a vision that we have here that's unified, but also you've all chosen to faithfully serve this community. And to repeat myself, you know, we just want to make this a better place. And there's so many ways that we as council, excuse me, as you as council, go about doing that. So. I think there is a shared vision. There is. Okay, so thank you. But some of it's different, some of it's, you know, together, but yeah, we have our vision. So I'd like to uh, make a motion that we amend it and put it to uh, 2%. Um, Just for the sake of clarity, I believe that Member Orr's motion is to change all references in Ordinance 98-23 that say 1.75% to say 2.0. 2.0, correct. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. <coughs> I'd also like to make a motion. Wait, let's get a roll call so we have that. Okay. <coughs> let's, ben, could you call the roll on that? Mm -hmm. Member Orr? I'm for it. Member Volt? Yes. Member Shrine? Yes. Member Waring? Nope. Member McLeaster? Yes. Member Wyrick? Yes. Member Matheny? Yes. Six in favor, one of them. Okay. Um, it's kind of a motion and a second to you. the call a result of the oh, of the Six, I thought you did. <laughs> well, you need to just say six to one succeed. motion and six <laughs> Um, kind of a motion and a second to adopt the second reading of Ordinance 98-2023 as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, kind of a, a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council requiring three readings. I'll make a motion. Revolt seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and can I have a motion and a second to adopt Ordinance 98-2023 under suspension of the rules? Make revolt moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read the title of Resolution 99-2023? A resolution directing the Board of Election to place upon the ballot at the primary election to be held on March 19th, 2024, the question of increasing the city of North Canton's rate of municipal income tax from 1.5% to 1.75% beginning January 1st, 2025 for the purposes of general municipal operations, maintenance, new equipment, extension and enlargement of municipal services and facilities and capital improvements and declaring the same to be an emergency. Okay. okay. This is just what you need to do to actually place the um, levy on the ballot. So at this point we have it at 1.75, so I'm assuming in order to put on the ballot we need to change this um, to 2.0. So do we need an amendment? This one would also have to be amended. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> um, ben, would you like to read the uh, amendment language for us? Um, 
This would be a motion to amend resolution 99-2023 to change all references therein that say 1.75% to say 2.0%. Okay. We need a motion for that? Yes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries six to one. Um, have a motion and a second to adopt the second reading of Resol resolution 99-2023 as amended. The vote moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries six to one. And can I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council requiring three readings. The vote moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And kind of a motion and a second to adopt resolution 99-2023 under suspension of the rules. The vote moves. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, moving on to department reports. Uh, Patrick. Uh, no report. Okay. Uh, Mayor. Um, not at this time. Really? Great. <laughs> 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 All right. I, I, I reserve uh, a couple of minutes at the end. Yes. Something else. You may. You Thank may you. bank your minutes. Thank you. Uh, Gina. No report. Okay. Ben. Um, for, since it is the last meeting before the end of term, uh, if anybody has any perishable items in your drawer and you want to keep them, please take them. Otherwise, they will be thrown out. Plastic bananas do not count. Okay. <laughs> That's all. How about candy? Does candy count? Uh, candy counts. Candy counts. Oh, I got yeah. Okay. Let's uh, go on to council reports. Jamie. I want to thank the folks from the North Kent Fire Department, specifically those on the EMS squad who responded to help my father and his time of need last Wednesday. So thank you very much. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. David. So just one final thought as we go into this, as the hard decisions are being made. Um, I will not vote for another budget that falls short of our income. And then on a brighter note, as we, we come into the season of giving the Toys for Tots, is still being collected at both City Hall and both fire stations. So that is up through December 6th. So all new and unwrapped gifts for Toys for Tots, if you'd like to contribute there, those three locations will accept that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Stephanie. Um, speaking of a time in need, uh, at Tremont Coffee, we are collecting items for the Humane Society. So if anybody has um, items, you would just be shocked at what they need. Um, so all Tremont Coffees and Carpe Diem downtown. And then, um, Daryl, this is your last is. meeting. So I just want to um, say thank you for thank serving. You. And um, gosh, I, it, it seems like just yesterday we were back in that old room and we went back there and um, didn't know what to expect. And uh, we have talked many a times where we, I think, have both been walking outside and... and uh, discussing different matters and whether we agree or, or not. Um, I think there's a mutual respect of learning and understanding and um, idea sharing. And um, just thank you. Thank you for serving this community for all those years and uh, coming back. And um, I think we'll miss you here good. sitting there, truly. You're getting good replacement. Yeah. <coughs> all right, I'm going to skip you for now. How about oh, that? let me go. I like that. I think you skipped John as well. Yeah, oh, oh uh, yeah. All right. I'll go John. Yeah, you did. You, I mean, yeah. A uh, couple of things. Ben, thank you so much for bringing my phone up to date and the iPad. Uh, I, mean, I was hacked a couple months ago now. And then the wrong phone number <coughs> was put out. It was a real mess. So thank you, Ben. Um, Daryl? I would. I would like to say you were not hacked. Oh, was it? Well, yes. <laughs> how did the wrong? Stop that rumor, Bill. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. How did the how did the number get wrong? You offended the IT guy. <laughs> there was an administrative error that changed your phone number. Not on my part. <laughs> but you were not hacked. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> back to Daryl. Uh, thank you for the two years I've been on council. I've learned a lot from you. You've mattered me. You've taught me some things. And hopefully your door is always open for me to it's come out. Open. Because you do live in my ward. But thank you so much. Uh, that's all. All right, Christina. So Winterfest is this Saturday, yes. December second, four to seven thirty p.m. Um, very similar to what it's been the past couple of years. I feel like we have a formula that really works for that. Um, the library and city are partnering to make that happen, so it'd be great to see everyone. And then Daryl, like, I just, we're gonna miss, I think, you know, your institutional knowledge, your vision, your intelligence, you're one of the smartest people I've ever known. Mm -hmm. I am amazed constantly how you just kind of come up with these facts and these figures from, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, how long have you been doing this? Like, a long time. Um, so, we're going to miss you, and also just, I really appreciate you encouraging me to seek a seat at this dais. Um, I'll always be grateful for that. That's all. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to Winterfest. Uh, I'm looking forward to decorating the tree on Wednesday now, so that'll be fun. Um, None of the stuff is easy when you're talking about raising taxes. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's not a fun thing. Um, I think the most <coughs> important thing is on 113 days, 113 days, we put it in the hands of the voters. Um, I think that's the most important thing. Uh, Daryl, you know, I thought this was going to be like a roast, so I've kind of changed my, my speech here. Jeez. But no, um, I'd say that, you know, you're, you've kind of like become a brother to me. I wouldn't say dad. I'm, you're old enough to be my dad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say more of a brother, but a mentor, historian. Um, and don't kid yourselves. He's not going anywhere. He's still going to call you guys. <laughs> you, That's right, that cranky constituent. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Call but, caller ID. No, thank you. Thank you for everything. Okay. My pleasure. Well, I will say this, that... Uh, Serving this community has been a, a great honor and a privilege. It, it is a huge responsibility, as Ms. Mr. Matheny said tonight. Occasionally, we have to make pretty heavy decisions. Sometimes it's no fun. As I've looked at uh, my career, uh, I jokingly say that I've been <coughs> seldom right, but never in doubt. And uh, hopefully, I haven't been too disagreeable if I've disagreed. Uh, from my heart, I want to tell you that I'm grateful to this council, the administration, and particularly my wife, for being so patient and understanding over these many years, particularly on this 3.0 tour that uh, was unanticipated. But I want to leave you with this note that it is my hope for all of you uh, that you can find as much satisfaction in this work, and that's really what it is, this labor, that I as I have. Uh, and if you do, I'm really confident that the city and its citizens will be in a good place. So, farewell, <laughs> good luck, and I'm going to make a move. Well, you got to take care of one more piece of business, I do. right? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, final call for new business. Uh, uh, quick question to Ben. With next week being our first meeting, new meeting, are we going to get pictures taken, or is that just for the new person? Um, you will get new term photos taken that night next to our lovely flag <coughs> for the website. Dress accordingly. So, dress yeah. nice. This okay. Friday? On Friday. Friday. This Friday. Yep. Oh, this Friday. Yep. Cool. At your swearing in, you'll get a new picture. Okay, what time is that? 5? 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Friday. So I understand the clerk has a final piece of new business he'd like to consider, like us to consider? I do. Daryl is not getting off that easy. <laughs> <laughs> the boy wonder gets the last word. Um, <laughs> I want to start uh, by saying thank you to everyone else at this dais, uh, particularly uh, Patrick and the mayor for letting me, a uh, relative novice, uh, give Daryl's farewell instead of them. <laughs> 
Um, it will be my pleasure tonight to give you all a little bit of information about our very own Daryl Revolt and his time at the city of North Carolina. <laughs> Daryl, I hope affectionately, has been known to call me Daryl Jr. He does this, I assume, because he calls me every day for the last four years, wow. imparting unto me the wisdom of an elder statesman. Through these many conversations, I've begun to, <coughs> at times, be able to anticipate some of what Daryl is going to ask me for or to investigate for him. However, it is not any of these wonderful conversations that I want to share with you all today or that will continue to stick with me. Instead, I want to share the first thing that Daryl ever said to me. I have been reflecting on what he said for nearly six years now, and it has struck me as profound, although I doubt that he remembers what he says or knows why I say this. At the time I met Daryl, I was a junior at Walsh University. That night, I was attending my first ever city council meeting, and I had only come because my professor offered extra credit. But by the end of the night, I was asking Member Warren how I could get an internship with the city. While I'm having this conversation with Member Warren and former Member Kiesling, Daryl overhears and decides to interject. He tells the bright-eyed, hopeful political science student that he's a fool. <laughs> I don't want an internship with the city of North Canton. If I really want to make a difference, if I really want to be a policy wonk, his words, or be involved in public administration, I should go to Columbus or Washington, D.C. The city isn't worth my time, and I won't find what I'm looking for. He said this, I believe, because he thought he was helping to guide me to a brighter and better future. But we'll come back to that. <laughs> Daryl must have been correct that I was foolish, because I ignored him. I had asked for an internship anyway, and got it. So a few months go by, and Patrick gives me my first internship assignment for a member of city council. That member? Daryl Revolt. So Patrick sets up a meeting with Daryl, and at the last minute, not unsurprisingly, he has to leave, but sends me, little intern, to meet with Daryl alone anyway. This is when Daryl said the second thing he ever said to me. Why are you here? <laughs> if you really want to make change, you need to get out of the city. He again told me that I should go to Columbus or D.C. Again, I believe Daryl felt he was helping to guide me on a better path by discouraging me from local government. Obviously, I again ignored the advice, as I'm still here today. But all of the advice Daryl has given me in four years of daily phone calls, those two statements from when we barely knew each other, have struck, me as the, have struck me the most, because they are profound. Profound in how wrong they were. <laughs> they were wrong because Daryl forgot one crucial and vitally important piece of evidence to the contrary, himself. Daryl Revolt, the old man, our elder statesman, is the greatest example of what can be accomplished for your community and your hometown by staying and serving. Daryl first ran for office 42 years ago in 1981, and from the very beginning of his <coughs> career, Daryl was setting records and affecting change. He ran to help promote and protect a local small business, or, as he tells the story, for the right to drink beer. At the time, Eric's grocery bag was attempting to become the very first location in the city to sell alcohol, and some of the council were highly opposed to their referendum. Daryl agreed to try and help out his friend, not only by supporting the petition, but by running for office to help advocate, advocate from inside local government. In December 1981, Daryl became the new Ward 4 council member and the only freshman member of the 67th Council of the City of North Canton. With that first term, Daryl set a record. He became the first ever new council member to be sworn in in December after a 1980, char 1980 charter amendment changed the terms from January to December. Darrell went on to serve as a ward council member for eight terms from 1982 to 1998. During that time, Darrell helped the city to grow and thrive by ably representing his constituents. In 1998, Darrell became president of city council. And then that September, Mayor Hines resigned and elevated Darrell to the office of mayor. 
Darrell served honorably for nearly two terms from 1998 to 2001. And in 2000, Darrell again made history, becoming the first mayor of the city of North Canton to serve in the 21st century and third millennium. In March of 2001, Darrell resigned, but he continued to pursue public service by taking a job with the governor's office as director of legislative affairs for the Ohio Department of Development. But Darrell wasn't done with North Canton. Darrell has since returned to elected office in the city of North Canton as an at-large council member twice, from 2008 to 2011 and 2018 to now. As a demonstration of his leadership, dedication, and responsibility, Darrell's fellow council members saw fit to elect him vice president of council 10 times, president of council five times, and to appoint him mayor of the city when that post became vacant. Throughout his 30 years of elected service, Darrell has demonstrated a commitment to and a love for the city of North Canton, which on numerous occasions has pushed him to serve above and beyond the call of duty. Darrell has spent many hours in council chambers, on the phone with constituents, and in the parking lots of City Hall and the Civic Center, having informal meetings, and after all of it, North Canton is a premier Stark County community. Darrell's selfless service and dedication to his hometown, its residents, and the future of North Canton are an incredible example of the power of local government. He is proof that you don't have to go to Columbus <coughs> or DC to make life better for your neighbors, to work to solve the problems and issues that only government can, and to serve your community. Through his dedication and hard work, Darrell has shown the value of staying in North Canton. That is what Darrell forgot or perhaps he could not see for himself when he told me that I was hurt, <coughs> when he told me that I should leave. But I am so thankful that in my youthful pride, I ignored him. I am thankful because as a result, I've been able to spend four years learning from and serving with one of the greatest public servants in North Canton history. Darrell has shared wisdom on zoning, economic development, contract management, personnel management, and most importantly, selflessness. He repeatedly, and I do mean repeatedly, imparted to me that the purpose of North Canton government was to serve the residents. That power, influence, or glory for any individual or policy was pointless and not worth achieving if the decision did not make the lives of residents better. It is my sincerest hope that as I continue my career in public service, I can come somewhere close to being the same kind of public service servant as Daryl L. Revolt. On behalf of the staff at City Hall and for the entire North Canton community, Daryl, thank you for your years of dedicated service. There are no words to appropriately express gratitude for all the time, effort, and intellect that you have given us. It is my honor tonight to recommend Ma Member Revolt for the Golden Gavel Award for Public Service in recognition of his 30 years of service to the community. And it is my humble request that this council consider designating the Golden Gavel Award as the Daryl L. Revolt Golden Gavel Award for Public <coughs> Service in honor of the longest serving elected official in North Canton history to date. Thank you. <laughs> well, as I, as I said in my closing remarks, seldom right, never in doubt, I gave you that advice. <laughs> and I just want to say for the record, I saw this on the agenda and I thought we were saving the sappy stuff till later, so I, having gone first, didn't get to say what I wanted to say. It wasn't on my agenda. All right. I did intentionally leave it up. Oh, that was so good. So good. Thank you. I thank you so very much for all the wisdom you've imparted upon me. I, I can't yeah. quite Thanks. come close to following. Uh, what this is my only Oh, okay. I'll, I'll um, by my calculations, I've served with you for approximately 730 June. days, and I guarantee you we've probably talked on the phone twice that much. Um, <laughs> just, uh, I'm going to miss the phone calls. So. That's it. Thank you well, for you know, everything. And I, I, I don't want to belabor this, but I've, I've had the over 30 years, I've served a lot of councils and a lot of teams, and arguably, this is this is the best group that I've worked with. This has been the most productive. I mean, when I look back on the things that we've accomplished under with the administration of mayor and the partnership, I, I, you have no idea how good this really is. And the fact that we can debate issues without being disagreeable, we can make sausage, 
uh, and go out in the parking lot and still communicate with one another. That is a tremendous, tremendous gift for this community. And I think it speaks well to the people in this room. And it's, like I said, it's been my pleasure. So, I'm done. Mr. President? And my last comment. Sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you do it back your time. <coughs> I do it my time. But thank you again for your service. And I appreciate the, our first visit, which I don't even remember what you said, other than, you know, good luck. <laughs> okay? <laughs> But no, really, thank you for all your, Ben summed it up so, so uh, brilliantly, but thank you for your service, and I know you're not going to be a stranger, okay, Probably not. for our city. But thanks for everything Roger's that you've done, and it's hard to be <laughs> that I go back with you to 1981 when I first became a, a police officer in the city of North Canton. So it's been a good ride for me, too. Thank, Thank you very much. 1981, I think we need to get your photo up here next week. So, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Look at that. So look at you. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Wow. Ben? Can we have a resume? It's the last time you're going to the Wayback Machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Hey, yeah. All right. Can we have a motion and a second to spend council rule 23 to allow for consideration what will be resolution 100-2023 without a committee report. So, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read the title of Resolution 100-2023? A resolution to confer the inaugural Golden Gavel Award for Public Service upon Daryl L. Revolt, who has given of himself in service to the city of North Canton as an elected official thereof for 30 years. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> and I told uh, Ben before the meeting started, I think it's kind of ironic that we had the resolution at Daryl's age, 100, but uh, so, um, <laughs> nice how it worked cool. out. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of turned into a roast. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I have a motion and a second to adopt the first reading of resolution 100-2023? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And can I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council requiring three readings? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And can I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 100 2023 under suspension of the rules? So, so moved. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There is a gold one. Yeah. Gold one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For you. Does it have his name on it? It does it indeed. Does. Wow. It does indeed. No, I actually have two of these. I have one from when I was mayor, and uh, so this will this will enjoy an equal place of honor. Thank you very much. That's great. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Great tribute. I think Thank you should you. end the meeting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so uh, coming up on December first at five p.m., we'll have our organizational meeting. Here. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, I'll let you make the motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. Adjourn. <laughs> that did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Smart with the kids have free at last. <laughs> free at last. <laughs> uh, we'll get you for something. Uh, uh, free at last. <clears throat> well, that was great, Ben. Nice job. Really nice. Yeah. nice job, Ben. Work on that. I have been working on that speech for a year and a half. Ever since he said he was going to retire the last It'll actually be in the That's great. I still remember I see that. I can see that. Oh. I know that. Yeah, I can still see that. I So many people just call this Marsha's dad's Marsha's Procedural question. Mm -hmm. All right, so income tax. Yeah.